This is the Lynx from Work Tough Gear, designed by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives in Quebec, Canada. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this small but very capable knife, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Vic Lynn at Work Tough Gear for sending out the links so that I could share it with you. So this is not the first knife from Work Tough Gear designed by Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives that I've tested and reviews. I think the first one was the Kodiak, massive chopper, a wonderful knife. Not something I carry a lot, but boy, is it ever capable. Then came the Wolverine, camp size knife. Nice, not small, no, still not small knife, but a good size knife, nice all rounder in the camp. And then the third one was Alex's dedicated bushcraft knife called the Forester. Man, I really like that knife, and uh, I carry that one a lot for that reason. I kind of left this one to last because, to be honest, I wasn't quite sure how well I'd get along with it. It's, it's so small, and I have XL hands, two double XL hands. Well, Vic sent it out anyway, and I'm ever glad he did because it may be a small knife, but that doesn't mean it's not capable of some bigger tasks. Let me explain in a moment. What I thought I would do first, though, is just bring in the camera a little closer, give you some close-ups on the knife while I go over its specifications. I'm going to do a few demonstrations, not all the ones I normally do with a, a knife out here in the woods, but a few just to give you an idea of what it's capable of, and of course I'll talk about my experiences with it. All right, before we take a closer look at the knife itself, I just want to focus in on the sheath for a moment, so let me take the knife out of the sheath and set it aside. Like all the Kydex sheaths from Work Tough Gear, Vic hit it out of the park as always. You can even see, look at the forming on that, the vacuum forming on that. It even picked up the thumb scallop and even the screw detent on the side of the knife. So perfect fit, no rattle, no shake, no, and very secure, of course. And Vic does a great job of a thumb push off. That's actually missed on a lot. It's not hard, right? It's just, but it is an extra step and it makes all the difference on a small knife. Now, I have it set up like this with an Alti clip for pocket carrying before anybody jumps on me. Uh, yes, I've been carrying this in my pocket, mostly around the house and out here in the woods where I don't want to get into the legalities of it. You'll have to check the legalities in your area to see if you can carry a fixed blade on your belt or in your pocket. But I like it because it does a great job of replacing a folding knife much more capability, but really not much really difference in size or weight. The other way I've got this one set up is in neck carry. And this is the way I actually wore it out into the woods today was with this neck carry. The only reason I took it off is because I needed to hang my microphone around my neck. So yeah, great little sheath. Two sh and what I guess I like here is that um, I can have both of them on at the same time, have it ready for around my neck. And as I did when I got here, took it off, folded the string all up, dropped it into my pocket, clipped it to the inside of my pants, and uh, it was good to go until I was ready to make this video. So let me just put that out of the way. I'll bring the knife back in. I want to go through its specifications before we start talking about its design and what its intended purpose is. So overall length for this knife is 7 inches, 178 millimeters. Blade length is 3.3 .3 inches or 84 millimeters. Blade thickness, and you can see it's quite thin, 0.11 of an inch or 2.8 millimeters. The blade steel is N690 cryo, hardened to some, between 58 and 60 on the Rockwell scale. N690 is quickly becoming one of my favorite stainless steels, and I know that it is a hard steel for knife makers to work with. They go through a lot of belts because it is a tough steel to work with. But what you get in the end is a good quality stainless steel, not super steel, but approaching that in quality. And with the, the way it's heat treated by Vic, and you, he can get a Rockwell of, of approaching 60 on the uh, Rockwell scale, that's pretty impressive, and it has shown up. Now, the risk there, of course, is when it starts to get really hard, is does it chip? Well, no, it doesn't. At least this one hasn't for me. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'll say about the steel for now. Knife weight, all important, right? 3.5 ounces, 99 grams. But if you add in the sheath, it does bring it up to 4.9 ounces, or 139 grams. And the material is black G10. All right, let's just go over the design of the knife a little bit. You should be able to see the resemblance between the Lynx and the larger knives from Alex at Aurora Borealis Knives, produced by Work Tough Gear, the Kodiak and the Wolverine specifically, not so much the Forester, of course. It has the general 
same overall blade shape, just of course much, much smaller. And uh, you can see it is a clip point, gentle clip point, but a clip point nonetheless. It is not a full flat grind, but it's almost, it is a high saber. You can probably see the flat just up at the top here. So it pretty much performs like a full flat grind. The handle, not exactly broom handle as they're called, but close enough, right? It's very simple, rounded end, which I'll speak to in a moment. Very thin up here. Again, I'll speak to that when my experience is because I, people are saying, but Mark, you complain that knives don't fit your hand with your XL hand to double XL hand. Light knives like this wouldn't fit your hand. It doesn't for some tasks and it does really well for other. I'll explain in a moment. So one thing I'll say about the knife blade shape up here, it has a very pronounced belly. It's not a shallow belly, it's quite pronounced. And when I saw that, the first thing that came to mind with the shape of the overall knife is, boy, that'd make a nice skinny knife. Now I'm the hunter no longer, but if I was, I would think I could choke up on this knife like this and use it very, very controlled for skinning purposes with just enough of a clip to allow me to get it upside down and in under the skin on the belly of an animal without piercing the entrails inside. So I think this would make a great hunting companion knife. Maybe not replacing a full-size one, but all the small work that you're likely to do with skinning animals, I think this would be just spot on perfect. Just look at the way that's shaped. Let me allow me to get all the control I need in my hand and even with my XL hands I have all kinds of control. Now let's just work our way back to this point. It does have thumb scallops and I wondered is that really necessary? Are you really going to benefit from thumb scallops on a knife this small? Truth is if you want to do pinch grip they actually make it much more comfortable and pinch grip is a legitimate grip on this and you can hold it in reverse grip like this. Now small but I will demonstrate chest lever cut or scissor cut in a moment. So I can actually hold it quite comfortably here. Now it's not something I'm going to choose to do a lot of wood processing with, but uh, you know, you can do the tasks you need to do around camp. Doesn't replace a big knife, but it is a great backup to a big knife or off, or at least where the big knife is too big for the small jobs, this one steps in. But you got to know where I use this the most. This for kitchen, in the kitchen for food prep or out here for food prep. And in fact, today I had some uh, sausage and that's what I used to cut the sausage up in addition to some hard boiled eggs. But for cutting the sausage up, this is just a great little knife for working at. So yeah, all the kitchen tasks are, are those tasks spot on. Will it do fire prep? superbly in fact I'll, I'll demonstrate some of the tasks involved in fire prep. You can baton, you can split, but it's small. Why would I choose to do that? Well, you can because you can do little tiny splits very sharp with actually a burr on the edge of this spine so it'll scrape very well scrape fat wood scrape wood scrape a ferrocerium rod it does that all nice and comfortable now i did mention i wanted to mention the the uh, end of the handle because it's rounded i can hold it in all these grips even though it is short and it disappears into my hand it is very comfortable in the palm of my hand if i can show that see where it's sitting it still remains comfortable because of that rounded end and of course there is the lanyard hole and of course, I always put a piece of orange pericordian, something like this that I'm going to be carrying out into the woods. All right, very simple knife, very simple design. And what I'll do is just a few simple demonstrations with it. All right, as I mentioned, I'm not going to do a lot of uh, heavy duty demonstrations with this knife to try and show its durability. That's what, not what this is about. It's about small tasks. I do want to show though that you can baton with it. So I'll baton one stick. And really the only reason I'm going to baton this is just to thin it out a little bit to make a little bit of feather demonstration again to show that you can do that with it. So the piece I have is pine. It is not the best piece of wood in the world. It is a little old, but you know, it is what it is, right? So yeah, you can see that just split away. Let, let's see if I can do a better job of doing it from the other end, maybe. Because there is a knot in this as well. I didn't want to get... All right, that's a bit better. So just gentle taps, right? That's all I needed to do to split that out. So within the wheelhouse of its size, it can split. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to feather this or not, but let's give it a try. So as I look at this piece of wood, it's got straight enough grain and the only knot is up here. So I'll just do a few feathers off of this end of the stick. My concern, of course, is the age of it and the fact that it's just a little bit damp. I just split this out of a, a downed branch and 
Smells nice, doesn't it? Pine, white pine, eastern white pine. Right? So I am just going to run a few feathers down with it just to show that you can. The reason I wouldn't do a lot of feather sticking in it is because of the size of the handle. I can do some, but it's not a great fit for me for doing a whole lot. And the fact that it has such a pronounced rounded belly towards the tip means that you run out of blade too quickly when you're trying to work down this way. However, let's give it a go and see what happens here. So I'm laying the blade right flat, turning it up just a little until the edge catches, rolling the stick over, catching the little peaks that I'm creating with the knife from each progressive cut. Certainly sliding through the wood easy enough. Try a little bit of a more of a curl by canting the blade. So I don't know that I mentioned this, but it's always worth mentioning. Like all the knives produced by Vic at Work Tough Gear, the edge on this, the secondary edge, was polished and slightly convexed. So uh, yeah, just an extra step, but that shows a touch of class and attention to detail that is hallmark of Work Tough Gear knives and it really prolongs the edge life. All right, so what have I got here? I can just speed them up a little bit. All right, so it feathers reasonably well, but uh, not the best wood in the world. And it's not something I would choose to feather, but I just wanted to show that you can. What I will do though, is set it up and just put a point on this with the chest lever cut. Then we're gonna do a little bit of scraping. Uh, I don't know if it'll be this wood, but I do have some fat wood in my ferrous serum, fer ser ferrous serum rod with me. All right, let's quickly put a point on this stick. You notice I didn't do any notching as I normally would uh, on a feather stick, or not a feather stick, when I'm creating a tent peg. Uh, take it from me, it will notch. I just don't feel the need to do that. I do have other knives with me today that would do it much more easily. I just, this however is something you might do is which is to point a point on a stick. So holding it in my hand like this, with that thumb scallop to give me purchase on the blade right here for control, it does fit in my hand nicely and comfortably, no hot spots, but it's small. It is small, so well, I can do this, and you can see how well it bites in. It wouldn't be the knife I would choose to do this so, but it works, right? All right, let's just do a little scraping and then we'll wrap the video up. So I'll keep the scraping to the minimum. Piece of fat wood, a little bit of birch, birch bark to catch the scrapings on. A little bit there. I think I'll just go around to another edge here. Oh, maybe this way. That's a better edge. All right, so a couple of fat wood scrapings. Wipe the edge off because it's now full of pine pitch, yep. Yep, it will scrape it for a serum rod as well as fat wood. What more can you ask from it? So, small knife, yes, but capable of all the small tasks. And uh, what more can you ask of a small knife? It makes a great, companion knife maybe to the larger ones. In fact, it occurs to me that if I can find someone that can do a good job of uh, working with Kydex, I may get them to a, create a sheath or means of attaching this sheath to one of the larger two knives, the, either the Kodiak or the uh, Wolverine. I think it would make great companion because you don't always want to be working with a big knife for all the tasks, you know, even cutting up food and the like, you don't need a big knife for that. This is all you really need for those tasks is a small knife, and this really is capable, aided by the fact of that high saber grind, almost full flat, and the thin 2.8 millimeter stock. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, the offset too. The fact that it sits, the blade is wide through here, allows it to get very thin, but it also creates a bit of an offset. So if you're working on the counter with a piece of meat or on a cutting board out here, of course, with a piece of meat or anything else, vegetables, it makes quite a bit of a difference to have it shaped like that. Okay, simple knife, simple design, hopefully a relatively short review. I uh, will put the links to where you can take another look at this at Work Tough Gear. Stay tuned for the next time Vic drops a few. I am going to put a link to the Facebook page, the Work Tough Gear fan um, Facebook page. 
Reason being, that's usually where you get the advance notice that Vic has got another production one run ready, and you'll see other people's thoughts on the ownership of these blades. If you haven't been to that page, I'd recommend going. It's a whole new way of looking at these work tough gear from the eyes of other people other than reviewers like myself. So. Once again, I'll put the specifications and the links in the video description. But if you have any questions or comments, please put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.